know what? I... You're going to land on your feet, Jer. Some company out there is going to think they're lucky stars they hired my little brother. <laughs> oh, my oh, God. God. Hey, Would everybody just relax for a second? There's no such thing as an Uncle Steve. That is an alien parasite. Hey guys, what's happening? Niat here with Film Comics Explained, and as requested, today we'll be exploring the alien parasites featured in Total Recall, the fourth episode of the second season of Rick and Morty. So don't let life pass you by. Call Recall for the memory of a lifetime. The alien parasites were essentially an unnamed group of creatures that would invade and conquer planets by shapeshifting into the forms of various beings before assuming a new persona to help them blend in. The parasites would then begin implanting people's minds with false memories of their newly adopted characters as being close friends and even extended family members. By tricking every being into thinking that they belonged where they were, they had hoped to take over every planet in the universe. I've known him my whole life. No, you haven't, Jerry. These telepathic little bastards, they embed themselves in memories and then they use those to multiply and spread out and take over planets. It's, it's disgusting. In the episode, Rick explains that the parasites survive and multiply by implanting fake memories into the heads of others. At first, we don't know if these parasites are in hiding or if they only appear as physical manifestations. And with every new character that pops up into the fray to confuse the Smith family with their happy memories, it becomes harder and harder for them to pinpoint the root of their infection. Now, the episode begins with the family socializing with their supposed Uncle Steve, and although we as the audience had never seen him, we assume that the character is being organically introduced to the story via exposition. Rick then arrives, throwing some green stones into the bin behind him, something we'll discuss later, before asking who Steve was. While the family attempts to explain their uncle's history, Steve makes a joke about Rick having spent too much time around glowing rocks, leading Rick to shoot him, exposing the parasite and its true form. And though Rick attempts to berate the family for bringing the parasites into their home, it was actually him who inadvertently transported the buggers, which were hiding his pink nodules and green rocks he had brought over from another planet in the episode Morty Night Run. Perhaps I'm biased, but if that story never happened, then I wouldn't still be the family butler. <laughs> Dare to dream. Wait. And if Mr. Beauregard wasn't our butler, it's safe to say the family'd be in a hell of a lot of trouble. <laughs> At the start of Total Recall, we see Rick disposing of the rocks right over the shoulder of the first parasite we meet called Uncle Steve. Josh McDermott, who served as the episode's art director, had previously explained that Uncle Steve was the original parasite who had laid other parasitic larvae in the home. McDermott also went on to say that post-transformation, the first parasite was the only one that had larvae growing off its back, as shown in his concept art for the parasites. These parasites would fall off of their progenitor, in this case Uncle Steve, before taking on a new form and memory to deceive those around it. As Morty would discover later in the episode, the parasites would only implant perfect, friendly, and happy memories into their victims, which meant that if an individual could not remember any bad memories about another person, that person was likely a parasite masquerading as a friend. I also thought it was interesting that they also seemed capable of suppressing other memories, particularly ones that contradicted the new memories they'd created. An example of this can be seen in the episode when one of the characters created, named Sleepy Gary, replaces Jerry as Beth's husband. As for this to work, all previous memories of Jerry as Beth's husband that were once held by the entire family would need to have been suppressed. The family is of course able to defeat the species after discovering they needed to cull those they only had happy memories of, and we see the Smiths hilariously annihilating those they treasured most and saving those they slightly despised. We could be infested with these things, so we gotta keep an eye out for any zany, wacky characters that pop up. Ooh wee! Whatever you want, Rick, we're here to help! Thanks, Mr. Poopy Butthole. I always could count on you. The writers threw us a massive red herring after the death of Uncle Steve with the introduction of a character named Mr. Poopy Butthole, who then appears in the title sequence as if he were a part of the family. With the addition of several new characters after this, we spend the entire episode assuming him to also be a parasite, as much like Uncle Steve, he'd never been seen before up until that point. But at the episode's conclusion, when he's shot by Beth, it's revealed that he'd actually been a close friend of Rick. He also makes a few brief appearances later in the series, reinforcing the notion that he was indeed an old friend of Rick and not an alien parasite. While this initially seemed to come out of nowhere, the creators did give us subtle hints along the way to indicate that he wasn't a parasite. For starters, when Rick first announces who he was, none of the family members dispute whether he had ever existed prior to that point. Also, the first memory he reminds them of was not of a pleasant experience, but of when they'd been trapped in the elevator together. Finally, although the intro made Mr. Poopy Butthole look like a parasite, it actually foreshadowed the revelation that he was real as most of the montages in the opening scenes were a collection of bad memories the Smith family had shared together. Who's got a bad memory about Mrs. Refrigerator? Uh, uh, uh. Everyone has bad memories of me. <laughs> Remember that one time? <laughs> 
Well, that's all for today, folks. Big thanks to all of you guys who requested we take a look at the alien parasites featured in Rick and Morty. Don't forget to hit subscribe and click the notification icon to stay up to date on all my content. And if there's anything else you'd like to request, please don't hesitate to ask. As always, it's been a pleasure. Niat here with Film Comics Explained. Thanks for stopping by. Never go in my room again. I didn't! She's real! She's my bitch of a sister! Nice.